Hey folks, Joe here with Geeks Worldwide, and this is... Chase. And he's also with Geeks Worldwide. He's, you've been inducted into Geeks Worldwide. Sure Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to the clan. And there's Thank no you. membership fee, but your back will be branded with a hot iron. <laughs> there we so go. So what we have in front of us are two options for 17-inch gaming laptops. There's a ton of options out there. You've seen them on the channel before, like the Razer Blade Pro. Uh, but, but, I have zero experience with MSI and zero experience with... Electronics. So we're going to take this a little bit differently. We're going to go through both of them. We're going to talk about what we like and dislike. I've had this now for a week. Chase, how long have you had yours? Two weeks. Two weeks. Yeah. So we're going to dive into them, but again, a little differently than before. So first, let's talk specs. They're both fairly similar with one key difference being the GPU. So let me go through it. Mm -hmm. We have two 17-inch IPS panels. Uh, it's 32 gigabytes of RAM. Hard drives, both SSD. This is a 512. Is yours a 512 or one terabyte? One terabyte. Okay, so you got me there. That's yeah, good. All right. <laughs> You're winning the battle so far. Um, now, the key difference, even though, it, again, uh, another similar thing is that the CPU is an i7-9750H, which is a hex core processor and pretty much the standard for 17-inch gaming laptops and 15-inchers, by the way. Mm. So the key difference is the GPU. This is an RTX 2080 Max-Q, which means you don't get the full power of a mobile 2080. So you're not even close to a desktop 2080, but you're going to get amazing 1080p performance. And what do you have in there? In here we have the Max P version instead of the Max Q variant, and it's a 2070 instead of a 2080. So you think about that, you got a Max Q, so you've got a clocked down, undervolted 2080, then you got the full mobile daddy of the 2070. So they should be able to go neck and neck, and I'm very curious to see where they'll outperform one over the other. But we're not gonna do that right now today. We'll get back to you on those types of specs. But we can do a little tour of these chassis and then talk about some of our performances. So um, let me show you what this sucker looks like. So on this keyboard, I'll go ahead and flip that one around and open it up too. We can put them side by side. So this keyboard deck is a little crammed in my opinion, but it's even less crammed than yours. Mm. So at least with these chiclet style keys, you get a little bit of space so you can, sure. in your peripheral vision and with your feeling, you can tell that there's some gap between the keys and the number pad does stick out a hair further than the other keys. But on yours, it's just sort of all jammed together. Yeah. I mean, it looks yeah, like a phone, is. one of those soft keyboards on a phone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so what's it like typing on it? So I will say that it is kind of difficult sometimes because if you have larger fingers, which I fortunately do not, but someone has used my laptop who does have larger fingers and they were complaining a lot about the fact that when they would press keys, like if they were typing quickly, they would often type two letters at a time. And also the haptic feedback on these keys is pretty minimal. So a lot of times you can't really feel when you get like that press feeling. So you'll hit keys without realizing it and you'll look back at your sentence you typed or whatever it may be, and you'll see that you actually added a few characters that weren't intentional. And what's your use case? You're a student. Yes. All right, so you take this to class and you yeah, type on so it? Yeah, so I use this as a note-taking machine, but I also use it for gaming when I'm at my house because I don't really have the ability to keep like a mobile desk or like a standing desktop. So um, I went with this route because I figured I wanted something that I could use for all purposes, whether it's going to class and taking notes, the battery life the, of doing that, or just performing on games at home. Awesome, awesome. So with this keyboard, I don't really have those challenges. I think the space is a big difference as well as the key travel, but I find it very comfortable to type for long periods of time. In fact, I do prefer the typing experience of this over my daily laptop, which is a Razer Blade Pro, sorry, a Razer Blade 15, not the Pro, 15 inch <laughs> model from 2018. Let's talk trackpads. Okay. And I know you've had some challenges with yours. Yeah, so the trackpad, it has that um, Windows Aptic touch feature, which basically allows you to click without actually pressing down on the touchpad. Um, and I've had some battles with that feature because no matter how light or how heavy I tap without actually clicking the mouse pad, it'll, it'll register a click in whatever I'm doing, which can cause a lot of problems if you're like trying to use the two finger scroll feature, or if you're just meaning to, you know, right click on something but you accidentally left click and it, it can be a, a battle with the, the touchpad. Now this touchpad I absolutely love. Mm -hmm. I think it's great. Both run Windows Precision drivers, both are glass, but MSI's done a great job here. I have zero experience with MSI pre prior to this laptop and I'm very impressed with the trackpad. I guess the best way to describe it is I'm just not worried about it. Yeah, you and know? yours has that rolled gold, ro rose, rose gold, gold baby, all <laughs> over the place. And yeah, yeah we, we should definitely talk about that. Why don't we do something a little bit different? Go ahead and close okay. that down. Let's do a swap. Oh yeah? Alright, this is not permanent. All right. Just for the video. Hold that. Alright. Yours is heavier. It is. That's that's <laughs> almost five pounds. And how heavy is yours? Uh, almost five pounds. Really? <laughs> yeah. Uh, it must be the weight distribution. I think mine's about four and a half. Times. Okay. Well, I mean, it's a pretty big difference. Yeah. Right? So, one of the key differences in the chassis uh, between the two is the material. Mm. So this is an aluminum deck. And if you can just kind of tilt that forward, you can see that it is 
prone to fingerprints. In fact, MSI ships with the laptop a full-sized microfiber cloth, not like a little one you get with your Oakley sunglasses. Does anybody <laughs> buy Oakley sunglasses anymore? Um, I saw but, someone in the elevator wearing There we go, today. probably a person like me. <laughs> um, but anyway, this guy though, I mean look at this. Okay, let's put them side by side. I'm gonna run my finger. Yeah. I can definitely see my fingerprint on both, but hardly mm -hmm. on this one. So this is a magnesium alloy chassis. It's a newer, lighter material that is durable, but it has more of a plastic feel. So if you prefer the cold touch of metal, yeah. then you won't want this. But you do get that lighter weight. Yeah, at that's the end a good of the point though about the temperature. I hadn't realized that my my laptop doesn't ever actually get cold, whereas this one already is cold to the touch. So right. It is interesting difference. Yeah, and so I have permanently cold fingers. <laughs> so when I touch it, it's just like I'm home. But you right. know, this is great though. I like the way this this looks and feels. Uh, it definitely it does feel substantial. It doesn't feel like a cheap device. Yeah. So let's talk about price. Because even though they're both similarly spec, you know, mm -hmm. although that is the 2080 Max Q and this is the 2070 Max P, they, they are competing devices, but they are not priced anywhere in the same ballpark. Yeah. So, what did this run you? So that, um, with a bunch of other accessories included, was only two thousand. Two thousand dollars on Amazon. Yeah. Okay. So. This guy on Amazon is over $3,000. Yep. And the price does vary. It depends on mm -hmm. depends on exactly which model you want and who's reselling it, but $3,000. Yes. And I've seen this high as $3,500 just to find the right spec. Mm -hmm. MSI does also have an i9 model that I did not get my hands on and I worry about throttling on that. Right. Um, with this and performance, what kind of games have you played and what have you observed in terms of performance? Okay, so a lot of the games that I like to play a lot of the time um, include Rocket League, uh, Counter-Strike, and uh, Skyrim recently. Um, and Skyrim was really my, my game that I wanted to press the performance with. I know that it's an old game, right? It came out in 2012. But when you like start loading in a bunch of modifications to the game and you try to really push everything that it has going in it, it can really challenge even the, the most advanced desktop machines. So I wanted to see how this thing would handle it. And if you cap it at 60 FPS, which it does by default, there is nothing that my laptop hasn't been able to achieve and stay at that FPS range with that game. So really every game I've thrown at it has had great performance. Counter-Strike, a game you might be familiar with, um, it sits above 300 FPS the entire time I'm playing on pretty much medium and max setting. So it's a high performer for sure. That's awesome. Now, now the kind of games I'm playing here are a little bit different, although I am playing Witcher 3. So Witcher 3 mm -hmm. and Skyrim, both open world games. Witcher yeah. 3 is a few years more recently released, sure. 2015 I believe. So what I'm doing is I have that on Ultra mm -hmm. with NVIDIA Hairworks turned on to max, which yeah. NVIDIA Hairworks does tend to kill most GPUs. So anyhow, I I'm loving it. It's running it at over 90 frames per second. And then I've also played games like um, on what's called Army Dead Army 4. It's a new game that just came uh, out. I haven't heard of that one. Yeah, it's brand new. I'm reviewing <laughs> it. There's, well, you've maybe heard of Dead Army 3, right? This is Dead <laughs> Army 4, and it's a little bit like Left 4 Dead, if you're familiar with yeah, that yeah. game. And uh, that's another game where it's it doesn't take a whole lot to run it, but it's running beautifully mm -hmm. on highest settings, 1080p, and I'm getting well over 100 frames per second. Yeah. So um, one last comment before we wrap up. This is a 144 hertz panel. How yes. about on yours? Same thing. Same. Okay, great. So spec for spec, almost identical. The yep. key difference being the GPU. 2080 Max Q, 2070 Max P. This is an aluminum chassis, so it's a little cold to the touch, a little more firm, and I think it feels more substantial kind of like you're getting what you paid for and it also yeah. has a very you know fashion forward type design yeah, and <laughs> and then <laughs> this sucker is that magnesium alloy chassis so a little bit more dense but certainly durable yeah and lighter weight and if you want to tilt that forward it's also worth, no worth noting that when you upgrade from the 15 inch model to the 17 inch model the electronics line doesn't actually include their electronics label so with this machine you really get that matte just plain default feel there's nothing to really indicate that this is a gaming a gaming machine or even a high performing laptop so if you're going for like you know, the sleeper vibe, you can get that with this machine, but um, if you want to really show what you bought and show that you got something worth the money, right, this thing is a little bit more flashy with its uh, rose gold trimming on a lot of the parts. That is true. That is true. <laughs> All right. Well, we're here from Geeks Worldwide to give you guys our information. Hope you enjoyed it, and stay tuned to the channel for more information. Give us a like, and we'll get you some deeper reviews soon. Thanks a lot. Thank you.